I'm Emil Björnsson, a professor of wireless communications at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology. In this video, I will share my thoughts about how to plan a research career in a rapidly evolving technology landscape, such as the wireless industry. And this was originally my opening statement in a panel discussions in the IEEE Young Professionals program at the Globecom Conference 2024. So as a professor, one of my primary goals is to supervise PhD students and postdocs. And why do I do that? Is it because I would like to have a lot of research output? Well, I would say that the main goal is really to train you to become an independent and knowledgeable researcher. Someone who will keep doing research at a high level and contribute to our society for a very long time. You might stay for two to five years at the university, but after that you will have 30 years of a career in front of you. And that is where you really have the opportunity to change society. So my point is that your research output during your PhD or postdoc period is not the primary goal. Of course, it might be what is needed in order to let the funding agencies that help to do your PhD or postdoc actually be satisfied with what they invested in you. So if the goal is then to train you as a person when you are at university, why do we publish the research? Well, there are a number of different reasons to publish. One thing is that it is easy to come up with ideas about what might be a good solution to a problem. But actually turning an idea or a concept into rigorous science takes a lot of effort. And it's often that effort that pays off in order for you to understand what it means to really deeply do research that is helping society. And also it is then that the research result actually becomes useful. And then we publish in order to share that knowledge with other people. And of course also to train on being able to share information in an understandable manner with other people. And then other researchers can continue your line of research. It's very important to develop this ability to present and discuss and defend your research outcomes both in publications and oral presentations and during, for example, a thesis defense. And there's also people who are annoyed with the peer review system that we have. I can certainly admit that this is not a perfect system, but throwing away such a system is also a very bad idea. Because this kind of resistance against just publishing anything out there is what makes a real research publication different from just writing something on a personal blog. It's supposed to be hard to pull through the important research results. One important thing to think about when you become a researcher is to not stare at citation statistics, even if people might be throwing these kind of things out on social media and talk about now they have reached a hundred or a thousand citations. Because this is something that really takes time to accumulate. Here are some statistics about computer science papers in the web of science, uh, where you can see in the blue bars here the number of references that publications contains. Some only contains a few, many contains 10, 20, and then it goes down like that. However, the citations that are given to papers is much more skewed. So most papers only get a few citations or none at all, and a few papers get a lot of citations, tens or hundreds or thousands of citations. And it's really hard to predict what ends up there. I have several papers with a lot of citations. But it's seldom the papers that you are the most proud of or that you thought would make the biggest impact that actually does it in reality. There is anyway a long delay because you publish a paper, then someone needs to read it, and then someone needs to write another paper that cites it, and then that needs to be really going with the snowball effect in order for you to reach up to these kind of numbers. So during a PhD period, you can't expect to get any citation at all. What you can do in order to try to influence and push papers into being cited more is to be open with your science approach. So make sure that your papers are readily available for everyone to download and that you also share data and simulation code and these type of things to make it easier for people to actually use your work, build on it and do further research. So they have a reason to cite your research and then improve on your work. 
One thing that I think is important when you're planning your career is to focus on methodologies and not applications. So what do you mean with that? Well, there's a number of different methods that you can be good at. In my area, it's things like communication theory, signal processing, machine learning, queuing theory, optimization methods, or doing prototyping of wireless systems. And all of these things can be done within the scope of different applications, such as MIMO communications, near-field communications, reconfigurable intelligent surfaces, radar sensing, satellite systems, and so on. And the main point is that the methodologies are changing kind of slowly while the applications are rapidly evolving. So if you become really good at working within one application, then maybe five or 10 years down the line, that application will not be particularly interesting anymore because we already solved all the important problems in that field. But if you are really good at using certain methods, you can shift and work with other applications along the way. So if I take myself as an example, I'm quite good in communication theory and signal processing. And I started applying this in MIMO communications. And then over the years, I've been shifting towards other topics like this near field reconfigurable surfaces and radar sensing. One thing that I think is really important to think about is this quote, most people overestimate what they can achieve in a year and underestimate what they can achieve in 10 years. And there are many people have been said to say this type of things. Bill Gates is one of those people. What I think is important is for you to have a long-term goal of what you would like to achieve and then have short-term actions that is taking you towards that goal. So maybe every year you have a goal that I would like to publish a paper, I would like to go to this conference and these type of things. And then it becomes easier to say no to things that are not aligned with your long-term goal. I think it's important when you work in science to figure out what you are good at, which doesn't have to be the same thing as other people, and what you like to do. And hopefully those things are the same, but it might also be that they are different and that you need to find a way of making use of both of these type of things. And don't compare you too much with other people, because there will always be some other people who are better than you on certain things. And it's easy to compare with the best people in the field. So don't do that. Be proud of what you are good at and what you like to do. And then challenge yourself and try to develop also some non-technical skills, such as presenting your work and reaching out with people, network, and so on. So if I finally should take an example of myself, I think that I'm quite good at solving complicated research problems and then communicating and explaining the outcomes to other people. And I like to record videos, I like to write texts, and therefore some of my actions has been to write these kind of textbooks and having this YouTube channel. In this way, I'm not directly publishing, I'm not directly getting citations out of doing this type of things, but I think I'm still impacting our research community by doing these type of things that I think I'm good at and that I like to do. So find those things for yourself and good luck with your career.